So anybody who follows you on Twitter has probably noticed that you have been posting clips of you grinding the tape and your take on some quarterbacks who are coming out in this draft. So we are debuting a new segment, Sage Grinds the Tape. Now on Purple Daily. Every football team eventually arrives at a lead play, a number one play, a bread and butter play. It's time for Sage to grind the tape. <laughs> Well done, as always, Manny Hill putting that together. Manny's the, the nice thing is with, with today's technology, how much quicker I can get to all the different types of plays where because there really isn't a film anymore. I mean, I can only imagine the old days when they had to actually cut these pieces of film up and put them on a projector. Uh, no wonder the game's advanced so much because I can go through so much information amongst these college quarterbacks, the types of throws, the types of passes, the types of you know defenses or whatever it might be, and 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 watch these college quarterbacks and sort of get right to the point and not have to spend nine hours watching what I watch is Joe Burrow film for about an hour and a half this morning. So, All right, uh, yeah, let's I'm talk slow. about it. What, what did you find from Joe Burrow? Where do you want to start? Uh, okay. He's good. Um, he's good. He is – he doesn't seem like he's a great athlete. All right. He has really good players around him. Uh, he's very accurate and that's, you know, he's accurate and makes good decisions, which I think is really, really important. He's definitely a more, like a more mobile than Kirk Cousins where he does move around the pocket subtly. Uh, but his accuracy down the field is exceptional, uh, on deep crossing routes, on go routes. Uh, you know, if he needs a back shoulder, he, he puts exactly where he needs to put it. Um, that's where I like him, but you know, he's not a, a super exciting guy. Um, but he definitely, you know, has a lot of those sort of more Tom Brady. I mean, he's a better athlete than Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong, but he has some of those traits of that accuracy on deep, uh, intermediate and short stuff. He doesn't take bad chances when he tries to push the ball down the field. Uh, you know, he, when, when the, when the play's not there, he checks the ball down to his running back. You can tell he's been coached very, very well. This guy could step in and play in the NFL right away. How do you separate somebody's supporting cast from them as a quarterback? Because you and I last year watched Daniel Jones. We were like, uh, yeah, more doctors than uh, NFL receivers at Duke uh, is correct. Yeah. But their, their supporting cast for Daniel Jones was horrendous. But this LSU, I mean, that's as close to an NFL team as you're ever going to get not being an NFL team. It is, and, and I don't know that answer yet because I haven't been doing this for years and years and years, and I've always sort of skimmed over some of these college guys and not been big on the draft and whatever, but I'm sort of going to dive into it this year. Obviously, going to the combine, I think, last year gave me uh, a little bit of a spark, and so I, I haven't really got into, you know, how do you deal with when somebody is just talented is way, way better. Um, all you can really go off of, you know, do they make accurate throws? And, you know, a lot of times when your teams have really, really good talent, they ask their quarterback to do very little. You know, it's like, hey, throw this little underneath route here yeah. because your guys will just make plays afterwards. I mean, that's that's a lot what Tim Tebow did when he was a college quarterback. I mean, he was not super accurate down the field. He was not throwing comebacks and deep posts and what. It was a lot of like shallow crosses to guys like Percy Harvin, uh, of course, Aaron Hernandez, the tight end. They had a whole bunch of really, really good players you know, on that team. And, and, but this is a different situation where yes, he's got better players and probably loves opponents, but you know, it is the sec. I, I refuse yeah. to watch the crappy team. I'm not going to watch the Georgia States or those types of teams. I watched, you know, Florida and, and Alabama and the teams that also have, you know, maybe a little bit worse talent than LSC this year, but not much. I, I'm sure Al or Alabama's talent is just as good. I'm sure Florida yeah. is also right there. And, and uh, so I'm trying to watch those games. So there really isn't much of a talent gap. Now, when you go to the next level as a draft guy, you make comps. You start making quarterback comparisons, Sage. Can you yes. compare Joe Burrow to someone in the NFL presently? Or or that was around when you were playing? You know, um, you know maybe a Carson Palmer. You know, he sort of has that big, tall, uh, you know, accurate passer, you know, type of thing going on. He is a pretty good athlete. He doesn't look amazing he's not like some guy who's you know making all sorts of pe people miss but i like his slight uh sort of movement in the pocket uh he a lot of times there'll be a blitz coming he'll see a little color come from the other side and he'll just either move up a little bit or he'll move to the right a little bit maybe step up in the pocket throw a ball a little bit off balance uh he's not a robo quarterback which i like about him and mm -hmm. i guess carson palm is probably a little bit more of a a robo guy. Um, what's a good comp for him? Okay, you have to give me a it. second. The only no, a second to think about. It. I've I've got one. I've got one. He's Tennessee Titans Ryan Tannehill. Like not any other Ryan Tannehill. 
Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill, that's athletic mm. enough to dodge tacklers and make some plays is extremely accurate, can make big time throws. If you give him room to I throw like the your, ball down the field, I like he's got the arm strength. Titans. I like your Not Tennessee Dolphins, Titans. Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> Only Tennessee Titans, Ryan Tannehill. Yes. That, that, that sounds exactly what you're describing. Yes. Well, you know, Tannehill was a really good, he was a receiver in, in college yeah. for a couple of years. I don't know if he's, so he's probably a better athlete than Burrow. Athlete is him, but his pocket movement is better than Tannehill's pocket movement. So, um, you know, he's not like a gunslinger, like a, a Matt Stafford. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's Matt not Ryan? doing those types of things. He's got a better arm than Matt Ryan. Mm. I would say um, he's uh, calm. He's very calm in the pocket. He's you know very smooth. He's very natural. Uh, Matt Ryan is not a I don't think a real natural thrower. He's become a I think he's a you know very good quarterback. But I, Joe Burrow is a very natural thrower. I think there's something about that that I think for a long time he's going to be a good quarterback when you have that type of throwing motion as well. How hard do you think it's going to be for Joe Burrow to go to the Cincinnati Bengals, who are just devoid of talent hard it will be hard and not only talent i mean he's going from a you know lsu which is a really 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 big deal in that part of the country and they're you know the 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 center of college football and and you know every single game is is really important to cincinnati where most people aren't even paying attention unless you basically live in southern ohio and northern kentucky so i mean it'd be almost a shock to go from basically a world-class college program to a sort of second level third level nfl you know franchise you know that in having less talent instead of equal or more talent than everybody else uh yeah it's going to be different he's going to have to take his lumps and bruises and and but then again that could make him a better football player in the end or it could you know break him and and he not have a very good career i always think about that when the vikings built tco performance center a lot of the players first comment was yeah, this is kind of how it was in college with all this nice stuff around that uh, the NFL is, is not quite as cushy as some of the situations there. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah, it's not even close to being it, they, they don't need to listen. If some team's going to pay you five million dollars a year and they have just sort of like a whatever weight room or some team's going to pay you three point five and they've got an amazing weight room. Who cares about the weight room? It's looking weights, <laughs> right. right? I mean, right. take the extra million and a half bucks. You know, your 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 four kids college is completely paid for at that point. Life is good. So um, you, you don't need that. It I think it does. Listen, the, the old Winter Park, which I'm sure when it was built at the time, it was this great facility, but it was the worst facility I was in in the NFL. And if it's some sort of situations even and you don't have a place where you love to go in and work and it's, you know, this basically weight room in the basement, which basically what it was, and it was sort of split up. And then you go to these other teams now, what like what the Vikings have now and what these some other teams have now built, uh, I think of all things are, are even. Uh, it's not just the fact that the building, the weight room, and the locker room is better. It's really the uh, the dedication by the ownership to put money back into the franchise to try to make the franchise better. Sort of like that commitment, which might sell you that hey, this team, it's not just trying to make every dollar possible and save money like what sort of like the Bengals do and some mm-hmm. of these teams do. Yeah, they are really committed to doing anything possible to win, including basically you know wasting money on you know fancier facilities that you don't really need. Uh, but it is you know if you're going to be a world class organization, you do need to have world class facilities. Yeah, and that would be the one reason for Joe Burrow to say he's not going to the Bengals. I don't think it's going to happen, but there seems to be a weird amount of conversation about it because they are in such a bad place and it's not Would an Would you pull an Eli? If you're Joe Burrow, do you pull an Eli? Mm. Yes. I mean, the you Bengals do. are in such a bad position. They've been so trash for so, so long. So if you want if you want to know something what's interesting is, you know, the uh, – the, San Diego Chargers, what was the San Diego Chargers back then? Um, I can't say that they were the Cincinnati Bengals, but there was a long history there of Mm -hmm. the Spanos family being sort of known to being cheap, uh, not putting all those resources to bat. They had this sort of this older stadium that definitely needed redone. There just was not a team that was willing to, again, fully commit to doing whatever possible, spending money more and money on the right coaches and upgrading this and whatever. And that was known when Eli made that decision. His yep. dad, of course, you know, been the, around the NFL forever. That was known for a long, long time. And and the, the chances of having success at those teams is just harder. You're just 
playing yeah. with sort of a, a, a the, the the cards you're already stacked against you. And, and Cincinnati is maybe the at the top of the list of those football teams that life is harder for those guys to try and win. And uh, so, I mean, if you want to win a Super Bowl, it's going to be harder. And of course, you'd like to have that mindset like, hey, I'll go anywhere and I'll just, you know, uh, you know, I, I've won everywhere. And, you know, obviously Burrow won the national championship. I'm going to make this franchise a winner. But mm -hmm. it's a different deal when other teams legitimately have better players and put more money into scouting and, and they don't go cheap. And that the Bengals definitely do that. This is the ultimate draft of the worst franchises are picking at the top. I mean, you have Cincinnati first and then Washington, Detroit, Miami. Like, yuck. Uh, who's after that? If, if I'm Joe Burrow, I'm in. Weirdly, you might be saying, hey, Los Angeles, would you trade up for me? Because they don't have a quarterback at the moment outside of uh, Tyrod Taylor. But, you know, I, I would be considering it if I was Joe Burrow. They would really need to sell me on why, you know, because someone will trade everything for me. And we know that this works since John Elway and Eli Manning did it, um, that if you say you're just not going there, they will trade you uh, as opposed to drafting you and just making you sit out. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, so if, if I'm him, I'm, I'm considering it because they are in such a bad place. It's not like they even have a coach who's proven who I believe in, who's coming to tell. It's not like they have Mike Tomlin who would come and tell me, Hey, we'll turn this thing around. It's a guy who has no back, uh, back history of success as a head coach. This is his first gig. It's not like they have great receivers. AJ green's going to try to leave unless they franchise tag him. They have no offensive line except for the guy they drafted last year. Who knows if he's any good? I mean, it's just really not a good situation at it, all. It, 